There's a reason why Xtrades is currently the fastest growing application on the market for sharing financial ideas. With over $2.5 million paid in the last two years to contributors, users are flocking to see what trades the top traders on the leaderboard are sharing in real time. If you're looking to grow your reputation as a trader on the internet or discuss your trading ideas with other reputable investors, click the link below and get connected with the trading mentor today, completely free of charge. Hey guys, this is Hydra from Xtrades, and in this video, we're gonna break down um, the key differences between stocks and options. All right, so let's get into it. With stocks, um, you have part ownership of the company. So if I'm buying Apple shares, then that means I am a part owner of Apple, right? With options, you don't have that because you don't actually own any shares. Um, options is more like trading, short-term trading. So um, you're basically just trading numbers and you don't actually have any ownership of the actual company. So that's the key difference. Second thing with stocks, there's no time limit. So if I can buy a stock and then I can hold it for a minute or I can hold it for a year. With options, there's this very, um, there's a set in date expiration date. And uh, yeah, so there's a date where the option expires and there's nothing you can do about that. So there's very, you can only hold it for a limited time. So that's a key difference. And then um, another key difference is that with stocks, uh, you have you have more potential for um, or with options, you have more potential for making a higher risk uh, or a higher return trade, but it's also higher risk. And with stocks, it's lower return, um, but also lower risk. And uh, so, yeah, let's let's get into that, actually. So with Apple, let's say you're you buy Apple. So let's say Apple is trading at 135 and you can either buy 100 shares of Apple or you could buy one contract um, of Apple. So let's say so let's say you buy 100 shares of Apple and Apple ends up closing um, the week at 139, right? So it goes from 135 and then it ends on the week at 139. So if you, if you sold it at the end of the week, you would have made a $400 profit because you're buying 100 shares, right? Um, so 139 minus 135 times 100, $400 profit with stocks, right? And if you did that with options, so let's say you bought a 140C contract. So this is a weekly contract, expires on the Friday. Um, so <clears throat> the option contract did go in your way because the stock went from 135 to 139. But let's say that you didn't, um, you let it expire. And uh, since it expired below the strike price, so the strike price is 140, and it, and it, and it expired below the stock price, or the strike price. So um, this $35 that you spent on the option contract um, goes to zero, right? So if that happens, you basically take a full loss on your option contract. And uh, so yeah, you lose the $35. This is pretty weird though, right? Because uh, that. The stock still did go in your way, went up four dollars, but since it closed below your option or strike price, it ended up being worthless. So that's a very big risk with options, right? Um, it's very easy to, easy to lose money. So even though it went in your way, you still ended up <coughs> losing your complete <coughs> capital on that trade, right? Versus uh, shares, you ended up actually making a solid two point nine percent, and uh, yeah, that's not bad, right? So you ended up making coming out four hundred dollars in the green. So this is a good example of higher risk. Um, so higher risk for options, and uh, also lower risk for shares, but uh, steady income, right? So if you have a lot of money, uh, or if you have a good amount of capital, it would be a good idea to um, invest in uh, shares or stocks. But yeah, keep in mind this did. Uh, required thirteen thousand five hundred dollars to buy the hundred shares of Apple, right? And one thirty-five. Um. So let's take another example. Uh, let's take a look at another example. So let's say Apple is trading again at one thirty-five, and this time you buy, you buy the same contract. Um. You buy actually you buy a one forty-five. Whoops, one forty, one forty call contract, and you buy at the same price again. But this time Apple closes at one forty-five, right? So if you bought it with uh, shares or with stocks, you would do 145 minus 135, so $10. And then you have 100 shares, so that's a $1,000 profit with stocks. But let's say you uh, 
<clears throat> let's say what would happen to your option contract right and go from 0.35 to five dollars because it ended up closing five dollars above your strike price so that would be a uh, five dollar premium right there so your 0.35 or 35 dollars turned into 500 dollars so that's a 465 profit with options you might be thinking where well, you still made more money with stocks right so wouldn't stocks always be the best option but you have to take a look at the <clears throat> amount of capital that you put in the return that you got so with stocks you put in thirteen thousand five hundred dollars and you made a thousand bucks off it and that's a 7.4 percent return but with options you only put in thirty five dollars and you made a four hundred sixty five dollar or you made four hundred sixty dollars sixty five dollars of profit and that's a really really big return right so this is a key or this is a great example that highlights why options are so good in terms of like risk reward you could put a very small amount of capital and make a huge return right um so yeah this is a good example of why options are higher risk but also higher reward as well and the stocks are, tend to be lower risk <coughs> lower reward and uh if you're starting up, I would recommend starting with stocks only, just because they're lower risk, right? If you have if you have a good amount of capital and uh, you want to get started in the market, I would definitely recommend with the uh, stocks, just because they're lower risk, and then you can get your feet in the water. And then once you once you become more experienced, then uh, you can venture into options. And even even if you are more experienced. I would recommend only using options for like the best of the best trades. Otherwise, just stick to uh, stocks. And then the last difference is that with stocks, you can make money if the stock goes up or down. With options, you can make money if the stock goes up or down, but you can also make money if the <coughs> stock goes sideways. So there's these strategies called um, iron condors or butterflies or calendar spreads, things like that, right? With options, you have a lot more ways to get creative and make money and uh, yeah that doesn't require the stock to go up or down it can also go sideways so <clears throat> yeah the key difference there is that with options you can be more creative and find more ways to make money and it doesn't simply have to go up or down but um yeah that's all i got for you guys um yeah thank you guys for tuning in